Grand Rising, beautiful soul family. I'm Coach Susie, and welcome to the Beyond of You's podcast. You inspire others with your story. What would I say to my 13-year-old self? I saw a meme on IG that said, I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you did a bad thing in the past, and you realized it was a bad thing, it was bad, and spoke out against it, and spoke out against that bad thing, that doesn't make you a hypocrite. That makes you a person capable of change and positive growth. And so, you know, when I was 13 years old, I didn't realize the power of my sacred sexual energy, you know, and that it was truly a treasure that it was truly a prize, that it was the center of my creativity and my desires and the things that I wish to manifest into my life. You know, all I could see was, wow, my friends are having boyfriends. You know, maybe I'm not pretty enough or you know, I don't have the boobs that they have. I don't have the ass that they have, you know. Maybe, maybe I won't have a boyfriend. Maybe, maybe no man likes me, you know. These are the things that were going through my mind as a 13-year-old, you know, because I did. I had friends who were having sex, you know, with different people and they had boyfriends, you know, they had relationships. And I mean, I know I was very, <laughs> I was very picky back then even because I had guys that liked me, but it was always like that obsessive, like unhealthy type of stuff. You know, like I had this one, when we were in junior high school, my, my best friend at the time, or kind of my best friend, I guess, um, it was my mom and her mom had grew up together. So it's kind of like we claimed each other as cousins, but we was friends and we went to school together. And, you know, she would fight. She would fight all the time. I'm not really like a fighter. I would fight. You know, a lot of the times I did get beat up when I fought, but I didn't back down from a fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want a couple of fights, but I've also lost a few, you know? And it's like, I don't back down from a fight. But, like, at this day and, and age, like, you know, I'm not going to jail for nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if there's a dude involved and you want me to fight over you, I'm not fighting over you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just not doing that anymore in my life. I've done that before. You know, I've tried to force relationships that, that didn't work. You know what I'm saying? Like, I forced that relationship with my children's father. You know, yeah, he was interested in me, but I, I was not at all interested in him. You know, and then... When we did get together, it's like I was trying to force it. I was trying to make things happen. I wanted to get married, like all this stuff. And it's just like, you don't have to do that with real love. You know, like real and genuine love doesn't need to be forced. It's like a natural flow. You know what I'm saying? That's like, that's like flowing through life, you know, with the universe. It's like a natural flow. Like, I don't worry about my finances. I don't worry about if this, if this whole community thing is going to take off, you know, like, I have one person in my community right now and I'm going to treat that one person like it was a hundred people in there, you know? So like that doesn't change who I am based upon what I have or don't have. I'm here to serve, you know? So I didn't realize the importance of, you know, saving, saving that sacred sexual energy. And I know people will be like, well, how do you know what you like if you don't have those experiences? And you know, I'm all for experience, you know, because I don't ever want to, I don't ever want to, um, convince someone that they shouldn't have their experiences because I don't know what their soul came here to do. I don't know the, uh, the contract that their soul signed up for. Maybe their soul signed up to be abstinent and that's who I'm speaking to. I'm speaking to that, that 13 year old who wishes to not follow after the crowd, who, who wishes to remain abstinent, who feels within her soul, his soul, that they are supposed to remain abstinent until they meet that 
that true partner. And that's the partner that's want, gonna want to get to know you on a friend. You know, you guys are gonna have a platonic friendship first. You're gonna build a platonic friendship first before you even venture down the aisle of sharing and swapping sex, you know, sacred sexual energy, you know, and and you know, I didn't realize the importance of this in my 13 and when I was 13. I didn't realize I didn't have sex until 14, but I didn't realize it in my 20s either. You know, when I when I went to college, I was bagging bodies. You know, they they call it bagging bodies or friends with benefits is what I called it, you know, because it was just like, you know, if I want if I need some, then I'll call you know, I'll go over there and if he wanted, you know what I'm saying? Like vice versa or whatever. And then when I would find out that they were messing with somebody else, then I would just like, all right, on to the next one. You know, cause like I, yeah, I wanted like exclusivity with or friends with benefits. So kind of like wanting a relationship without a relationship, you know, and that's not even really a relationship to me now. You know what I'm saying? Cause now when I'm, you know, being by myself for, um, these past 10 months, it's like really getting clear on what I want, you know, and what I see as a valuable relationship for me, for me to even move forward. You know what I'm saying? Like, and sex is not one of them. Sex is the icing on the cake now, you know, like it's on, it's the icing on the cake. When you have a mental, emotional, spiritual, and relate, and you relate to each other, you understand each other, you see each other. That sex is just like a bonus. You know what I'm saying? And it's even better when you have that stable foundation. So, you know, I'm talking to the 13 year old, the 15 year old who is, you know, feels peer pressure, to, you know, have a boyfriend or to have sex because their friends are having sex. And I just want you to know that that sacred sexual energy is very powerful, you know. And I didn't realize this because I didn't really care about myself. You know, I had come from this childhood of abuse and trauma and abandonment and, you know, mental and emotional abuse. So I really did not have a good view of myself anyway. You know, I really didn't care about myself. I really didn't value myself. I really didn't respect myself. I guess in a certain sense I did because like, you know, like I had that, that friend, my girlfriend, right? She was one of my best friends and we had this mutual friend. I won't say his name. I'm sure if he like watches my stuff still, he'll know exactly who he is, but he tried to molest me in the car, in her mother's car. Like, and we were just like friends, but I knew that he had like a, a huge crush on me. Like he, he genuinely liked me, but it was, it was to the point of obsession, you know? And I, I think that it's, it's a great thing to be obsessed with your partner and to love your partner, but you have to have a healthy obsession and unhealthy obsession leads to harm. It leads to abuse and it also leads to death. You know, because it's kind of like that. If I can't have you, then nobody will, you know, mentality when you get older. So, you know, it, it's okay to be obsessed in a healthy way with your partner, but know that sometimes, you know, sometimes relationships are only made for a season, you know, and we have to recognize those seasons and recognize when that season is up in that relationship, especially if you're not growing with that person. I never noticed that in my, in my, in my relationship with my children's father, I never noticed that we weren't growing together because I wasn't growing. Neither one of us was growing. But the moment that I started to grow, that's when I realized we're not growing together. We're on two different wavelengths. We're on two different pages. We have two different paths. You know, our paths meant to cross. And like I said before in another podcast, I stayed learning that lesson a little bit too long, you know? So, um, you know, I, I really didn't care about myself. I was very emotionally unavailable. You know, like I said before, I've, I lived the majority of my youth, my teenage years. You know, I was a tomboy, you know, I had hung around a lot of guys. My uncle was a year older than me. So, you know, like that was really like my best friend, you know? So I hung out with the guys. I rode dirt bikes in the woods, you know? So, um, you know, so that, that was, that was who I was, you know, I, I'm a tomboy by nature, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable in that masculine energy, 
but I love my feminine energy, you know, and before I was very emotionally unavailable, you know, like most men, I, I wouldn't talk about my feelings. I wouldn't express my emotions, you know, um, and when I did, it was, it was from a place of anger because I had held it in, you know, I had held it in and let it build up and then it just exploded, you know, so, and then I stayed, you know, like in that relationship, constantly telling somebody how to treat me. And now I know you're not going to have to tell a man how to treat you. That's, that's pretty much a little boy who hasn't become emotionally available himself. You know, this is, this is a little boy who's still operating from the wounded ego of the little boy inside of him. And just like I was, I was operating from that little girl who was wounded, you know, um, just having sex because, um, that's really all I thought I was good enough for, you know, because, um, I was sexually abused at a young age and it was like, oh, well, if a man loves, you know, if, if I have sex with a man and that means he loves me, that's what I equated love to with sex. And it's not sex is not love. Sex, like I said, is the icing on the cake of a loving relationship, a loving friendship. And that's what I want to, you know, stress the importance of is that it's so important, you know, to build that friendship. And like, I, I follow all these different people, right, on, on IG and, and stuff like that. And there's this one, I think it's called single guy quotes or single man quotes or something like that. But he, he has said something like, you know, it's hard to date in this, in this era. And I'm like, you know what? People don't really want to date. You know, people think that sex is dating, you know, and being Netflix and chill is dating. And if that's what you need, then more power to you. If that's what you like, then more power to you. But I want to go, I want to go have fun. I want to go on some adventures and see how you act under pressure. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's for you to see how I act under pressure. You know, let's go do an escape room. You know, let's go do some paintballing. You know, let's have some fun days. Not the regular Let's go to the movies or have dinner and talk. Let's go interact. Let's go actually have some fun together. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's go on a three-day vacation. As room, you know, as, as friends, we can get separate rooms. You know what I'm saying? We can even get the same room with double beds if you want to. You know what I'm saying? But let's just go and maybe not a same room with double beds. Now I'm thinking about it because I like, you know, I, I really do like my space. Um, like when I had went to the uh, beach, when we had went to the, um, for the weekend for the man that I was dating in 2019, we went to, um, we went to Nags Head or what is it? Ocean, Ocean, what is it? Ocean or Outer Banks. That's what it's called. Outer Banks. We went to Nags Head and I got my separate room. He had a separate room except for like the second night. Then, um, then I was in the hotel room with him and his boys. I didn't want to share the same hotel room because he had all his boys with him. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to be the only girl in the room. You know what I'm saying? Like I just felt really uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? So I had got my own room the first night. And then the second night I stayed with them, but you know, really like not, not really in the bed and we were out on the porch and stuff like that. But, um, you know, it was a friend trip. Like at that point I wasn't having sex with him anymore. We were just friends. You know, so that's how we travel. And that's really what I want to do going forward in my life because I didn't do that the first time around, you know. And, and I think that a lot of everything that I went through was not only for me to teach other people, but also to practice it on myself and just really stick to that. Stick to my standards, stick to my values. And if somebody can't appreciate that, then next, you know. Um, because I didn't realize the, the power in my sacred sexual energy and mass manifesting my dreams and living a life that I love, you know, and it's like, we struggle with, with believing in ourselves because we never took that time for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Like we still out here having sex with random partners and we're sharing that energy, you know, and here's the thing. If you are having sex with someone who's in a bad place emotionally they they're not open emotionally they are closed off they're secretive they um are still not they still don't love themselves they're depressed all the time they're sad all the time 
you know, like there, I, I totally understand. I still have days. I had a day yesterday, but it's not the same anymore. So yesterday I ain't do shit. I ain't do shit all day. Like, well, okay. I, I say I didn't do shit, but I ended up, you know, writing. Um, I got a couple of things done, but, and, but I didn't beat myself up and I was like, okay, okay. You know, like I'm gonna go ahead and relax because before, and I think that that is a key thing to depression is that because we have labeled it depression, when we feel stressed, when we feel frustrated, when we feel angry, when we feel sad, we've labeled it depression when it's actually just the negative emotions in us coming up to heal, to be released, whatever. You know, every single day we're taking on different energies. This is, we're energetic beings. We're constantly taking on different energies. We're constantly looking at the news. It's, you know, like different things are stressing us out. And so sometimes your body is like, you know what? It is time to sit down and relax and do nothing. And a lot of us beat ourselves up because we don't know how to honor that space, you know? So yesterday I just honored that space. I did absolutely nothing except for tap dance. I went to tap dance. Um, but I did absolutely nothing and it felt amazing. But today, here I am, punch, punching it out. You know what I'm saying? So you have to just honor that space within you. And I think a lot of people say, oh, I'm depressed because they are trying to, um, they're not honoring that space for themselves. You know, they're not honoring their body saying, rest, just relax, do nothing. And it's okay. You know, and you know, realizing that I can no longer share my sacred sexual energy with men who have not taken the time to heal from their past trauma and abuse. You know, the men who don't truly love themselves unconditionally, you know, and they are just looking to use a woman's sacred sexual energy as their place of escape. Or, you know, they want to bury their pain inside the womb of her, you know, inside her womb to exchange her energy with theirs, you know, so they want to pass off that pain to her and then take her sacred sexual energy. But that's the men who don't understand the power of their own divine feminine energy, because you never have to bury your pain inside of the divine feminine. You already have that divine feminine energy within you. You just got to tap into it. And you too can create and live the life of your dreams from that space. Doesn't make you less than a man. And I think so many men are afraid of tapping into that feminine energy because they feel that it makes them more of a, um, less of a man. Also, it also might be, now I just got this. Maybe they already know that they're gay and they don't want to tap into that sacred sex, that, that feminine energy because it will only enhance who they are and what they're trying to hide. So, you know, what I've learned is I'm, I'm looking for the man who has taken the time, who has tapped into his divine feminine energy and knows how to embody both of those energies because I know how to embody both of mine. Because like I said, when you're in a relationship, even though he is going to be a masculine man. And I know that because I'm a feminine woman. I love dresses. I love sandals. I love heels. Like I have one pair of tennis shoes. I'm actually going to go get another pair. Um, they're vans because they're like comfortable, but I'll have two pair of tennis shoes. Everything else is heels or sandals or boots. You know, like I love dresses and skirts. Do I have jeans? Absolutely. I do. I think I have like three pairs of jeans. I have leggings too, but even with the leggings, I'm going to have on my leggings and some sandals. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm wearing leggings in the winter, I have leggings and a hoodie and I'll probably have on like my, um, my little, my little work boots. They, I used to drive the bus in them, but they kind of like the duck boots. Um, but I love dressing. I love I love dresses. Like I love my sundresses in the summer. You know what I'm saying? So I know he's going to be of a more, he's going to be a masculine, you know what I'm saying? But I also know that his energy is going to be more feminine. He's going to be more in touch with his feminine side because I am more of, I am a more of a masculine energy, but I know how to balance that energy. So like, 
in a relationship, a man is going to have his days where he's in his feminine energy and he needs he needs that space and then I have to step up in my masculine and honor that, you know, and that's the same thing, you know, because that's the, that's how it is anyway. You know, I'm more in my feminine energy, but he is going to have his days when he needs to be in his feminine energy space and I have to be able to step up into my masculine and so many women are not comfortable in their, in their divine energies. They're either operating from one space which a lot of it is masculine energy. They're not operating from their feminine space. You know, you have to be, you have to be in that space, but you also have to know how to step up when he needs that, when he needs that nurturing, you know, or I mean, when he needs that assertiveness or, you know, you have to give to him or whatever, you know, you have to be able to step up into that space. So, you know, I say that, um, you know, protect your sacred sexual energy. Um, but that also means protecting it um, when you're not being sexually active because um, people can also create soul ties without sex. You know, they can, um, they can, they can manifest you, you know, like they're, they can, we have, we are in control of our thoughts, right? So they can sit up and dream about you and try to manifest you into their life, you know? So it's just, in extremely important to protect your energy and also your children's energy, you know, and talk to your daughters, talk to your sons about the importance of not allowing anyone to touch them, anyone to touch them in their private areas, you know, because that's a sacred space. That is a sacred space and that should not be touched. You know, a doctor can touch it. If something happens, you know, um, definitely you want to check on your children. But anyone who is actually touching your children, like teach your children this at a young age, especially in the black community. And I say that because, you know, in the black community, we have relatives who have molested children, you know, fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts, and grandparents, you know, so talk to your children about, you know, about that. And the, the sad thing is in the black community, and I'm speaking from, from the perspective of a black woman is that we push it up under the rug. We, we push, we push molestation and incest and abuse up under the rug and mental health, you know, and it's like, no, this we have to start speaking up about this. We have to make our communities and, and our children aware so that when, when they are over a relative's house and they put their hands on them, they say, no, no, I will tell my mommy or I will call the police and teach your children how to do this. You know what I'm saying? Let, make sure your children know how to dial 911 if someone is abusing them or um, trying to touch them sexually or doing things that they don't like. Look, teach your children to protect themselves because there are people out here who prey on that innocence. They realize there are a lot of, you know, pedophiles prey on young girls because of that sacred sexual energy because a lot of them are virgins. And they know the power of that. They know the power. They may not know the power of it, they, but they know when they are inside of it, it's powerful. You know, so they, you have to protect yourself and you have to protect your kids. And that's why I'm talking to my 13-year-old me. You know, and so I wrote a little letter and I said, Dear 13-year-old me, I know you want people to like you. But please learn to like and love yourself first so you don't find yourself in situations doing things for others to like you or to fit in with the crowd. I know your friends are sexually active and have boyfriends, but you're not missing out on anything. I know it's hard not having a mother or a father, but find a way to pursue your passions and the things you love doing the most. Instead of following after your friends and giving a boy your most prized possession, channel your sacred sexual energy into creativity and artistry. I know you feel you need to be responsible for your sisters and you feel the need to be an adult, but enjoy your youth. 
and you'll and never grow old. And you deserve to laugh, play, dance, sing, and have fun without any responsibility. Have as much fun as you possibly can and don't worry about whether the boys like you or not. Remain in your childlike state with your heart open wide, knowing that anything and everything is possible for you if you believe and take action towards those dreams. Love yourself unconditionally beyond your mother's abandonment, rejection, and abuse. Love yourself unconditionally beyond your father's abandonment, rejection, and suicide. Love yourself unconditionally beyond the voices of not good enough, weirdo, crazy, ugly, skinny, nappy head, scaredy cat, crybaby, or any other negative affirmation that was spoken over you unwillingly. When people attempt to call you names that don't fit who you are, tell them, that's not who I am. You don't have to accept the names that others give you and don't tie your self-esteem around what other people think of you, including your mother or your father. The universe said you're breathtaking body and soul, and you are marvelously made. Don't let the opinions of others take the love the universe planted within your heart and soul. Love the 46-year-old me. So, you know, like, it's just very important that we, that we teach our kids this, you know. I'm not a naive parent. You know, I know, you know, when my son was, when my son was at the age of having sex, you know, and and my son was actually smoking marijuana. I told him, I'm not going to be naive. I cannot tell you to do, to not, not, not to do things when I did them myself. But where I am today, I can tell you that, you know, like, as far as like marijuana, I support medicinal marijuana usage. Absolutely. Instead of synthetics, if you feel that you need to to smoke a blunt or smoke a bowl because of your anxiety or your depression, do that. But make sure that you're not doing it to cover up your emotions. Make sure it actually is on a day when you're having a panic attack or an anxiety symptom or a symptom of depression, you know, or a symptom of PTSD. Make sure that you are not smoking it to mask your emotions. You know, make sure that, you know, if, if you do smoke it, it is for recreational purposes or just to simply relax or whatever it is. But if you find yourself becoming addictive to it or it's like something that you're constantly doing, wake, you know, as soon as you wake up, noon, you know, night, eliminate it, cut it out, cut back on it. You know, because it's, it's masking your emotions. It's not allowing your emotions to come to the surface because you're not using it for medicinal purposes. Because nobody is depressed all day. Nobody is sad all day. You know, you can live in a, a happy state and have depressed and sad days. Like things, emotions will come up. Old emotions will come up. So just make sure that you're using it for the right reasons, you know, and same thing with alcohol. I don't use alcohol anymore because alcohol, I feel um, it kind of like, um, what do you call that? It kind of murks, murks the water of my intuition. Um, and I like to be a clear channel. I want, I want to be able to hear the messages for myself, the ones that I talk about on YouTube, on my podcast. You know, I want to be a clear channel for that. Um, and, a, and alcohol really does affect your brain cells. Um, and, and I just don't, I don't agree with alcohol, but again, it, you know, if you like a drink after work, as long as it's not your stress reliever, you know, like you have to find healthy coping mechanisms for stress, for depression, for anxiety, for panic attacks, and then figure out if you want to, if you still want to, um, you don't have a glass of wine with your dinner when you go out with your girlfriends or if you're on vacation, you know, like you have to, you have to become aware of your body, your body's needs and what's good for your body. And you can't fully do that. If you are, if you're stuffing yourself down with it, you, you, what worked for me was I had to let everything go. I had to let every single thing go. And then when I tried to smoke marijuana again, it was like, Whoa, no, I don't like how, this feel, I don't like this, the feeling that it gives me because it has me like on, it has me on like high alert paranoid, you know what I'm saying? So 
Um, I prefer to use the CBD, but again, I don't use it all the time. You know, like, yes, I do enjoy the flower. I'll sit out um, on the patio on, and what I've been doing recently is just, just when Aaliyah's gone with her dad, you know, on the weekends and, and I'm just enjoying myself, you know, um, I'll just at nighttime before it's time to, you know, lay down and relax, you know, I'll go and smoke me a little flower and, and, and relax, you know, but, but because I know how to manage my depression and sadness and anxiety now, um, I don't even really have any more anxiety episodes. Um, but, you know, I used to have severe panic attacks, but I no longer have that. And, you know, like I said, it's not all the time, you know, so um, I just do it out of, you know, relaxation. You know, when I'm when she's here with me, I have my valerian root, you know, um, but, you know, that's my preference, you know. So what I say is just realize what's good for you, what's best for you, you know, and don't don't let it become a habit, you know, and when it starts to become a habit, let it go because nothing should have control over you, you know, so, um, everything that you have is, is within you, you know, and your sacred sexual energy, that's a part of your sacral chakra, you know, and that's where creativity comes from. That's where your desires come from. That's where you manifest. And when you have a partner that you're on the same page with that you are mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and relationally connected to, you guys will manifest some powerful things. Like, you, you really can build the life of your dreams, but you gotta have somebody that's not trying to tear it down in the process. And so that's a lot of the reasons why I chose to get a divorce because I was outgrowing him. Um, and he was just there for the benefits. You know, he, he was not going to do any work. He was not going to, to put in the extra that was needed for us to go to the next level. And anytime I wanted to better myself, there was always an issue. There was always an issue. There was never any genuine support of me becoming the greatest version of myself. You know, and yeah, I, I had I had a few, you know, I dabbled in a few um, network marketing ventures. Um, and, you know, pretty much had to beg him to try the stuff or, you know, become a partner. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and I know your partner is not supposed to agree with every single thing that you, that you agree with. I absolutely know that. I know that, you know, it's not anybody else's job to support us. It's our job to support us. But can I tell you the value of having a supportive person in your life? Not one that when you when you walk across the stage, they have a growl or unhappy look on their face because they don't want you to they don't want you to succeed at anything. You know, when you have someone where they're constant, you know, nothing that you do is ever right. Or, you know, like when I was in the youth ministry, there was always an issue on Wednesday night, you know, because he knew I had to teach and you know, it was the kids don't need to be eating this late. And it's like, dude, it's one day a week. You know, it's just like always something. So it's very important for you to have a support system, especially when you're trying to build something, you know, because that goes a long way. If you have somebody there that's just like, you know what, babe, I, I might not support you and buy your stuff, but I want to see you win. You know, and, and that's what I'm looking for this time around is, is a partner that's willing to invest equally because I'm willing to invest in my partner. I am the cheerleader. I am going to want to uplift you and see you become the healthiest and greatest version of yourself. But hey, guess what? I deserve that too. And I'm not settling anymore. So um, we're going to go ahead and pull a card for today. But just, you know, protect your sacred sexual energy is all I can say. You know, there are people who, who want it. <laughs> they want it. It's powerful, you know. Um, but you know, and save it because you will get that partner. And I believe that I believe that it'll happen for me. I'm going to get that partner that's on, that's down to build, you know what I'm saying? 100% like we'll, we'll be building, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just bringing that same energy to the table. So, you know, that's why I say I'm okay with being single. Um, I think singleness is really a blessing. Um, and I, I'm actually doing another podcast about that. So we're going to do the daily guidance from your angels this week. It's my favorite deck. 
I'm, I'm looking for some more angel cards because I love working with the angels and seeing what the angels have to say. Um, but let's go ahead and get this show on the road, dear universe. I love you, spirit guides, guardian angels, archangels, archangel Gabriel. Thank you for being my protecting angel. Thank you um, for constantly helping me with my communication, uh, helping me to channel the message for, from spirit, channel the messages from spirit, and to speak them clearly. Uh, so that others can understand them and resonate with them. I thank you for being here um, as my communi communication guide and helping me to open up my throat chakra more um, so that I can speak, the, share the messages um, that Spirit is, is uh, downloading. So um, I'm just thankful and grateful for ancestors leading the way for, uh, for deceased loved ones that are protecting us. Um, thankful for Ascended Masters, Jesus, Buddha, and Muhammad. Thank you for your love and your teaching of love. And let us build up that love within our hearts where we know that you already, you, you gave that, you left that to us. We have that. It's ours. It's our birthright. We, we came into this world with the energy of love and we were born into the narcissism of the society and we have to get back to that space of love. So I'm thankful and grateful for the messages that are coming forth. I'm thankful and grateful for the energy that is rising above the energies of indifference and hate and we're flowing more effortlessly in the energies of love and compassion. Um, I'm thankful and grateful to be a vessel, a, a, a guide on this journey. Um, and uh, thank you for the message. And so be it and so it is. Amen. Amen, amen. Okay, so let's go ahead and we shuffle. We're going to cut it in half and then we're going to see what spirit has to say. See what message spirit has for us today. That one popped out. Thought it was going to drop. Okay, let's see here. Ooh, we got this one again. We had this one before. Play. <laughs> I just spoke about that in this one, right? You got to maintain that childlike spirit. This is your sacred sexual energy, okay? Because when you're when you're when you're harnessing that sacred sexual energy, you are creative, you are playful, you are magnetic. You know, like it it it, it it's it's amazing. It's amazing the things that it produces. Um but it has so much power. And so play says, beloved one, it's time to set aside work for a while. I did that yesterday. Don't worry. We will oversee your responsibilities to your, we will oversee your responsibilities to their completion. Playfulness, gaiety, and laughter will lift your energy so that you'll return to work with a renewed perspective and heightened energy. And this is why I stress the importance of relaxing. Of when you have those days, when you feel depressed, don't look at it as depression. Look at it as your body needing to re-energize. And then on those days, like I did yesterday, I went and tap danced. And that instantly raised my energy vibration. Fine. And I said this before, I've said this before, I love creative therapy. When you are depressed, when you are feeling sad, go do something fun that you love to do. If you love to ride dirt bikes, go ride a dirt bike. If you like to go and take your Jeep and go dirt riding or whatever they call it, go do that. If you love to do puzzles, do puzzles. If you love to color, color. If you love to tap dance, tap dance. If you love to dance, dance. If you love to sing, sing. If you love to write, write, create. Just create when you're feeling depressed, when you're, when you have a low energy space. And like that card says, when you do that, when you focus on your playfulness, guess what happens? You come back with a renewed sense of energy. You are able to pour more passion into your projects. You're able to give your projects 100%. You have to be able to take your time and rest. And so many of us are stressed out and frustrated because we don't know how to do this properly. We don't know how to do it. And this is what I'm teaching. That self-care 
is so important in your life and for you to make time for yourself. See, so many of us are making time for other people. We're not making time for ourselves and we're pissed off and resentful because I made all this fucking time for you and you make no time for me. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. And I had made a video the other day where I said, you know what? The person doesn't want to be my friend. I'm still going to be their friend. But you know what? I'm not. I'm not because I want those reciprocal relationships. No, I do want a friend. And I'm being a friend, but if you don't want my friendship, then that's okay. That's okay. And I had to move past that. You know, be a friend. And if that person doesn't want to interact with you or be your friend, then move on. And I had to do that, you know, because while I might see somebody as my friend, they may not see me as a friend. And guess what? It's okay. It's okay. It's no shade to me. It's no shade to that person. It just means that he didn't want, you know, that person didn't want to be my friend. I wanted to be his friend. He doesn't want to be my friend. Okay. Go on with your life, you know? Um, alrighty. So here we go. The angels see that you need to play. So they sent you this card. You've been working and worrying a lot lately. And your soul cries out for fun. I'm going to post this in my group today because this is good. Feelings of fatigue, irritability, or depression are additional signs that you're overdue for some playtime. You don't need to wait until you have a free moment because you can inject fun into your day today. Simple pleasures, moments of silliness, laughing with a friend or watching a funny movie are examples of ways to have fun that don't require a lot of time or money. Fun and play are necessary parts of life for children and adults. These types of activities help us live healthier lives and allow us to attain our desires more quickly. Fun is part of living a balanced life. Oh my goodness. I just spoke about this. I just spoke about this. When you are using that creative energy for fun, you manifest the life of your dreams. You absolutely do. And here's the kicker. My dreams don't look like yours. Your dreams don't look like mine. But we all have dreams. We all have this life that we envision for ourselves. So what I would absolutely suggest is that you take time and enjoy your own sacred sexual energy. For at least, I'm gonna say, you know what? People be like, people be like six months. I'm really a firm believer of just taking two years by yourself, really, to get to know yourself. I really am. You know, I think six months is a great time for you to focus on yourself because that really can put you five years ahead. But I also believe that if you struggle to really, to really love yourself for six months, then you're going to struggle in your relationships, okay? So, you know, some people need a year. Some people need two years. Some people, it's okay for six months. I'm a firm believer. I love six months. I do six months all the time. You know, um, when I left that last relationship, I said, you know, six months on myself. Here I am, 10 months. You know what I'm saying? So I have no problem spending a year, two year by myself. You know, I did a year and seven months is my longest, but I have no problem with going two years if I need to, you know, because... I get to focus on me. I get to enjoy me. I get to enjoy my life. I get to love me and have fun, play, create, and build and build the life of my dreams, you know, and then and then receive my partner, you know, but I'm not I'm not impartial to anything. The only thing that I require is building a friendship. You know, I'm not impartial to anybody manifesting into my life, but are you ready to build a friendship? Are you ready to tackle those things in from your childhood, you know what I'm saying? Or have you done that? When was your last relationship and how did you get over that? You know? So that's important to me going, going forward. But, um, the additional meanings for this card is stop what you're doing and go have fun right now. Release any guilt about having fun to the angels. You deserve happiness, pleasure, and enjoyment. Make sure that your re recreational activities are purely fun and non-competitive. You know, um, Yes, I know that there are sports, you know, we compete and all this other stuff, but I'm a firm believer of there is no competition. There's no competition. Not when you're in your lane, you know, when you are doing what your soul calls you to do, there is no competition. Yes, other people may do what you do, but you have a certain uniqueness that you're going to bring to the table. Nobody else can do it like you do it for who you were meant to do it for and who you were meant to do it with. You know, so um, just protect your sacred sexual energy. So I hope 
that y'all enjoyed the topic today. Um, if you are new here, I want to welcome you and I want to encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the bell for notifications because I do release new content every single day. If you are listening on Anchor, Apple, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, or Spotify, go ahead and hit the listener support. All listener support is greatly appreciated and accepted. Um, I want to thank all my regular YouTube subscribers and regular listener supporters because without listener support, um, you know, it would it, it makes it a lot difficult for me to be able to um, sit and create these podcasts and bring the life and energy that I desire to bring to them. So I appreciate all listener support. And for the newbies, if you are interested and um, if you enjoyed this topic today and you want to you wanna learn a little bit more from me, I invite you to subscribe to my monthly newsletter. In the newsletter, it's a self-care newsletter I send out monthly. I'm providing you with pr uh, pract practical tips, practical tools, resources, freebies, giveaways, discounts, um, and just, you know, just, just ways to love yourself unconditionally ways to practice put more self-care into your life um, and when you subscribe to the newsletter you will receive a link to a free facebook community which is 30 days to a healthier more confident version of you challenge for 30 days i'm challenging you to care for yourself to love yourself to get yourself out of that space of depression anxiety and to love yourself beyond those days to be able to go out and have fun and create and be that creative and playful being, you know, because that raises your energy vibration. So um, you get all of that when you subscribe. You'll also get your discount codes. You get a 25% off book bundle. Uh, you get 15% off any products. And you also get your discount code to download the PDF workbook and the self-love affirmation because they're normally $12. But when you register for... Um, when you subscribe to the newsletter, you'll receive the link and the discount code. You want to go ahead and download those and then go ahead and join the group. I'll approve you to, uh, to I'll accept your request to join and you can get started from day one. Um, after the 30 days are up, I do offer a deeper dive. I offer a community where we're diving into loving ourselves unconditionally, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, uh, physically, relationally, and financially. That is a monthly fee. But when you are a subscriber to the newsletter, you will receive a 70% or $70 discount off of the normal price. Now, if you are someone who is just listening, you don't want to subscribe to the newsletter, but you want to dive deeper into loving yourself unconditionally, but you don't need the 30 day group. You know, you've already started loving yourself. You are already working out your stuff, but you just want to go deeper. You feel like you're stuck in a couple of areas, maybe one. Um, you just want to go deeper you can join me. And that's a discount of $50. That code is G E G A T Z. That can be found in the description box on my YouTube channel. Um, or you guys can use that code if you're listening on the podcast. You know, I created uh, the community and a Mother's Touch Inc. because I wanted to be the coach, the community, the organization that I needed when I was leaving my 20-year unhealthy um, and abusive relationship and I found myself struggling in every area of my life. You know, I want to I be able to assist men and women um, with, uh, with paying their utilities and their bills after they have left a domestic violence situation because I know, I know the struggles. You know, I want to help more men and women love themselves unconditionally um, and become a healthier, happier, more holistic version of themselves while dealing with a mental barrier because you can live a happy, thriving, and successful life even with PTSD, even with bipolar disorder, even with ADHD, that does not define you. It's just a small part of your life, you know? And so many of us make that this big, huge part of our lives and we make ourselves so small to that, to that mental barrier. And it's actually the opposite. You can live a full on life and still have that mental barrier. But I teach you how to cope in healthy ways because a lot of us have unhealthy coping skills or I know I had unhealthy coping skills so um 
you know, I want to, I want to help, I want to assist co-parents and families with becoming the healthiest, happiest, and truest version of themselves so that they can raise healthy, happy, and holistic children who have a healthy love of themselves. And they take that out into the world and love others. Um, I really do believe that the reason why we don't love ourselves in the way that we do is because a lot of us were raised on survival, trauma, and abuse, and we were not raised on love, nurturing, and guidance. So I am being the adult that I needed when I was a child. I am being the community that I needed when I was going through my journey. I am being the organization that I needed when I was going through my hardships. So that's why I do it. That's why I do what I do. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to share it out with everyone you know. If you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, share. If you are listening on the podcast, please share it out to your social media platforms. Um, that's all I got for today, y'all. I thank y'all for being here. But before you go, you know I got to send y'all out. I got to cover you. The prayer of love to the universe. So let's go ahead and do that. Dear universe, I love you. And right now I just envision a bubble of protection over everyone who is listening to the podcast today. For everyone who is watching on YouTube, I just I just cover them right now. Cover them in a, a bubble of protection that is surrounded by the healing blue energy of Archangel Michael and the healing green energy of Archangel Raphael and and it's filled with unconditional love. It's filled with light. It's filled with positive energy. Because I want the people to know that depression and anxiety and panic attacks and PTSD and bipolar disorder and ADHD is such a small piece of your life. I did the, the podcast the other, uh, a podcast that shows the puzzle and that that mental barrier is just one tiny piece of the big puzzle that's you. You're such a beautiful masterpiece. And we focus on this one part of our lives that really has no bearing once we learn to cope in a healthy way and not project that onto other people and take time for ourselves and learn to love ourselves unconditionally and take care of ourselves on a daily basis and learn to say no when no is needed and learn to say yes when yes is needed but ultimately we have to take care of ourselves first if we ever want to make an impact or share love with other people it all starts with us change starts with us and it has to begin within so i just pray that um, the, the light and love of your high vibrational energy will begin to, to saturate our world, our planet, our nation, our families, our communities, and that we will continue to rise above the energies of indifference and hate and rise more in the energies of love and compassion because love truly is the greatest currency. Love is everything. Love is everything. You know, and when you have love, you know how to communicate. You know how to take care of other people. You know how to genuinely love other people. And you also learn, you also know how to put up boundaries and say, no, no, I don't treat myself that way. I'm not going to allow you to treat my, me that way either. You have respect and values for yourself. You're not out here sharing your sacred sexual energy with anyone because you know how powerful of a manifester it is in your life. And I just pray that those who are meant to, because I don't want to interrupt anyone's journey, anyone else's experiences, but those who resonate with this message, that's who I'm here for. I'm here for those people that are sick and tired of the cycle and they're ready to break it. So I thank you. It's a privilege and an honor to serve in this manner. I thank you for, for being my everything. That you are my, my world, my life. That you are the air that I breathe, the song that I sing. You are always enough and forever will be. And I'm thankful I'll wait. I'll wait for, for the man who truly loves and appreciates me and, and, and doesn't have a need to play God in my life. But he knows that he is an extension. He's an extension of that, that he's, he's my king. You know, he's, he's a God, but he's not my God. 
and I will treat him as such. But he's also to treat me like a goddess, like the goddess that, I'm a, that I am. I'm not, I, I don't deserve abuse. I don't deserve to be controlled. I don't deserve to be manipulated into, into anything. And I'll continue to wait for the one whose heart is ready for, my, for me in the same way that my heart is ready for him. So I thank you that your love is enough, that you will always be enough. That there is no second, there is no second thought. If I had to choose between someone and you, it will always be you. So um, I love you. I thank you. It's a privilege and an honor to serve other people um, with my light, with my energy, with my love, with my experiences, with my story. Uh, I love serving in this manner, and um, I'm thankful and grateful that I get to do it every single day. I'm thankful and grateful to see another day, to have the opportunity to do it. So let's rock this day out. Let's get her done. And so be it. And so it is. Amen. Amen. I thank y'all for joining me today. I want you to go out. Have an awesome, amazing, and beautiful day today. From my heart to yours, as always, namaste. If you experienced rejection, abandonment, trauma, or abuse as a child, you may find it difficult to create a healthy, happy, and holistic life. You are not alone. I am Coach Susie, and I am a survivor of addiction and narcissistic domestic violence abuse. I was raised by a mother who experienced narcissistic personality disorder, and I experienced every type of abuse. I was rejected, abandoned, and traumatized before the age of 10. As I grew older, I attracted these same type of relationships into my life because this was my life. It was all I knew and it was what I was accustomed to until I introduced myself to something different. In 2015, I left a 20 year unhealthy and abusive relationship with a man who struggles with narcissistic personality disorder. And I began a journey into loving myself unconditionally. It took me five years to accomplish living a happy, healthy, and holistic life. And that was primarily due to the lack of financial and educational resources for people like me who were severely traumatized as children and grew up in impoverished neighborhoods. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement was created from the mind of a traumatized child who struggled for years with self-doubt and low self-esteem. But I learned to love herself unconditionally beyond past abuse and thrive successfully in life with PTSD, bipolar disorder, and ADHD. I struggled to love myself unconditionally due to the mental and emotional abuse I received as a child. The voices of doubt, fear, and not good enough would constantly haunt me until I began to change my mind. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement is a community of people who desire to learn practical and effective ways to love themselves unconditionally beyond abuse. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement is not about chasing perfection and trying to be perfect. It's about learning to love yourself unconditionally in every area of your life, no matter what that looks like. It's about becoming the healthiest, happiest, and truest version of yourself, no matter what that looks like. If you are ready to learn how to love yourself unconditionally beyond abuse, Pre-register today at suzysuttles.com. Everyone has something to teach us. My question to you is, are you ready to learn?